Hello, and welcome to Health and Fitness Redefined. I'm your host, Anthony Amen. Join me today as we take a dive into the world of health and fitness, where we learn how to overcome adversity, to pick that jurisdiction, and see health and fitness in a whole new light. Today, we have a very special guest on. Her name is Vanessa Caffiero, and I told her I was going to screw her last name up, and I probably did, but it's okay. She is the owner of Emerge yoga and wellness. So we are going to be talking about all things wellness, everything outside of your general exercising, whether it's acupuncture, massage. She's This girl just is on top of it all when it comes to holistic healing, has an amazing story. And then without further ado, let's get her on in here. Welcome to the show, Vanessa. Hi, Anthony. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Absolute pleasure to have you on. I, I mean, we talked a little pre-show and I'm super excited to kind of dive into this episode and people hear all about your life. We and you had some very similarities, so excited about that. So why don't you just tell us just to kind of start, you know, what happened in your life to get to you to where you are today? Why don't you start us there? You know, I, I think as a teenager, I suffered from really chronic back pain and I grew up with scoliosis. I know a lot of kids have scoliosis. And at the time I was going to chiropractic, I was going to a massage therapist, I was doing everything to try to combat the pain, but nothing seemed to have a lasting effect. I noticed massage helped a little bit more than other stuff. And that's really when I got into yoga, I took my first class at 14 years old. And being that it was something that helped me so much, I ended up getting into that field. I became a massage therapist and then eventually a yoga teacher and just started sharing with other people the things that really helped me at you know a really challenging part in my life. Then when I was 23 years old, I just graduated massage school. I was teaching yoga at a few different studios. I was in a severe car accident and I incurred three traumatic brain injuries. And I remember being in a position, speaking with a neurologist, and not having any alternatives in Western medicine that were going to lead me to getting better. I remember pleading and saying, well, what do I do? I I'm all into holistic health. Tell me what to do and I'll do anything to feel better. And the neurologist basically said, go see a psychiatrist because you're gonna have permanent speech delays and maybe a learning disability. And that for me was a little bit of a crux at, at in one side of it. I was really discouraged, you know, feeling hopeless for a bit. And on the other side of the, the spectrum, I'm just one of those people who doesn't like to be told no. And I started exploring everything that I can do to basically prove this doctor wrong and just get myself back into a place of health. And that was really the trajectory of what got me started with my wellness business. I want to kind of take a step back, right? So yeah. First, scoliosis, and that's something obviously that you're born with, and you said around the age of 14, you started realizing to do some yoga, correct? Yeah, I took my first class at 14. Awesome. So you were starting to work on stretching, you realized you fell into massage, and then you got get into this car accident. You said you had three brain injuries. Can you be a little more specific on that? So there's different areas of your brain. I had frontal lobe brain damage. I, I tell people if you ever saw one flew over the cuckoo's nest, that's a real thing. Uh, parietal lobe, and then the corpus callosum is the part of your brain that allows you to switch between your left and right brain. So fine motor skills were really hard for me, being able to write with a pen, walk in a straight line, stuff that we all take for granted, were just overnight gone. What was that like for you? Like, obviously the accident must have been traumatic, but then after a couple of days, we kind of wake up to this realization that this is your life. Can you kind of explain how you felt in that scenario? Oh, absolutely. I was one of those kids when I was in school, I never got an A minus. So I was very book smart, very sharp on top of stuff. And I had something called speech aphasia. So I would know inside of myself how I felt and what I wanted to express. I'd say I'm standing on the floor, but then the words wouldn't come out. And I would say, that's a flower. Or, or something ridiculous where I had this internal knowing of what I wanted to express, but I couldn't get the words to come out of my mouth. I, I literally had to learn how to read again and write again and, and use a pen. That must have been frustrating. <laughs> frustrating to say the least. <laughs> Did you have any outside help, anyone that was kind of work you through this or were you pretty much on your own at this point? Well, I was very lucky because I was already a massage therapist and a yoga teacher. I had a lot of different resources in the realm of holistic 
alternatives. And I met a man who specialized in something called cranial sacral therapy, which is an osteopathic technique that's a hands-on way of working with the brain and the spinal cord. And, and honestly, I saw him three times a week. I got massage weekly. I got really deep into a meditation practice. And within a year, I was reading again and, you know, more functional than I assumed I'd be in 10. So it was wow, all those practices. And, and now I practice all this stuff myself as well because it helped me. So I feel really driven to share it. I, I got to say real quick, just kind of cut you off a little bit. Shout out to all my DOs out there. That's like my whole family. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate it. So you're moving on. You said in about a year, you started getting normal function about at what point did you decide to take that leap to owning, like practicing more? So I know you were doing yoga, you're doing massage, but I know now you just finished your acupuncturist. What, what, what sort of those steps? Walk us through what happened next. Well, to be a yoga teacher, massage therapist, health coach at such a young age, I took a lot of sabbaticals off college. I had a very Sicilian mother that said, I'm writing you out of my will if you don't finish your degree. So I, I finally finished up at 25. And literally at 25, I graduated college. I got my degree in exercise science from Hofstra. And three months later, I opened my first facility in Belmore. That was a 2,000 square foot yoga and you know massage facility. I met my business partner, Jen Nelson, in 2014. She ended up collaborating, buying into my business. And we expanded in 2016 to Massapequa. We're now in a 6,200 square foot facility. And uh, after our first year there, I just went to Jen. I was like, hey, I think we should go back to school. And she's like, you're crazy. And uh, we actually just graduated last week and just finished up our degree in acupuncture. We, we thought that uh, being able to help people more than just in a muscular skeletal way would expand our practice and wellness also gets us into the insurance game, which I know makes things a lot more accessible for people. So we just want to offer things from a multifaceted approach and not just be about one thing. I love that. This is like turning so many gears right now, because this is what I'm seeing myself do in the future, something very similar. But I want to I want to talk about the client experience walking into your place, right? So I'm coming in off the street, whatever it is. I have, I'm assuming an initial consultation with you guys. D depends on what you're coming in for. We have people who are coming in for group yoga and fitness classes. We were the first facility, I don't know if you've heard about it before, to do anti-gravity yoga on Long Island. So it's like no aerial stilts, you know, hammocks hanging from the ceiling. So you get a zero compression inversion. So we have a lot of different things we offer, but some people might just be coming in for a massage. So it depends on what you're coming in for. Uh, we'll maybe give you a consultation, uh, show you around the facility, and then you could always meet with one of the directors at the front desk to get a customized approach to what you need to do to, you know, meet your health goals. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about is the customized approach because I'm coming in, let's say I have a neck injury, someone like myself, right? So cervical spine damage is, would you, are you going to set up a program for me where it's going to be, all right, so you should probably do massages, this, do this kind of acupuncture and kind of blend everything together or is this kind of own separate thing? So one of my qualms with people who call themselves holistic practitioners is they really just operate the same way non-holistic practitioners do, but they do it with something that's natural. And what a real holistic approach is, it's targeting one issue from a multifaceted you know, di direction. So someone who's coming in with neck pain, it might be because you had an injury and we have to release a trigger point and massage is going to be really good for that. But it could also be that you need stretching and yoga is going to be good for that. But at the same time, if you want to be completely balanced, you're going to need some kind of fitness regimen as well. And if I'm only targeting the issue from one side of it, we're never actually going to make someone fully heal from whatever pathology that they're working with. So for me as a massage therapist, you know, for 15 years now, I could see that someone has like low back pain, for example, it's usually tight hamstrings and then, you know, over contracted hip flexors. But at the same time, th they might need to strengthen some other muscles to balance out the muscles that are tight. I can massage you every day, but if your posture is not corrected and you're not strengthening the areas that are weak, everything that I do is going to be temporary. So every client that comes in, we try to give them a customized approach based on what they're working with so they can have more lasting benefits. Yeah, I absolutely love that. <laughs> it's That's like, kids, man. <laughs> if I lived any closer, I'd be out there. But <laughs> We're worth the trip, I'm telling you. <laughs> Next time. So let's, let's talk a little bit more and kind of break it down each individual category. I think that's the best way to kind of hit those like a multi approach. So I want to start with massage. Because we never had anyone on the show ever talk about the benefits of massaging 
or what it can do for you or what kind of clientele because I don't want people, I, it just bothers me when people just assume massages are going to go get the, like this floofy little go relax. Like to me, that's, yeah, that's great. It's relaxing, but medical massages and working with people to fix issues is way more relevant for the, the field than let's light some candles and do some, <laughs> ooh, uh, that's, and I really want to target that. So why don't you explain that to us a little bit and how you would work with someone, just give them, an example of an injury and what, how you were treated. It doesn't have to be specific. Well, I would say in general, and I'm going to break this down as, as simplistic as I can. When you're stretching, a lot of the times you're targeting your muscles. When you're working out, you're targeting your muscles. But what makes you get really tight is not the muscle itself for the most part. It's the fascia or the connective tissue that surrounds the muscle and goes through it. So you can stretch on your own, stand up and touch your toes, and that's great. But because your muscles are contracted, you're really going to be targeting the stretch to the muscle belly itself. When you're in a massage therapy session, especially if it's medical massage or sports massage, your muscles are all completely relaxed. And that allows the practitioner to open and target your fascia a little bit more specifically. And that's going to give you lasting flexibility, um, sometimes even more than just stretching wood alone. Beyond that, as a fitness professional, I'm sure you know, major sports teams are now getting into yoga and, and different stretching regimens because flexibility is correlated with power and your ability like to throw a ball or something. You're only going to have as much trajectory forward as you can bring your shoulder back. And massage will target flexibility sometimes even better and more specifically than, uh, than, than stretching regimens. Now, not that stretching isn't good, but it's just a different way to target different tissue in your body. And if someone has a specific type of injury so let's say uh it doesn't matter it, somewhere and you're kind of massaging the area is there different types of like techniques so i know when you're when, like i've gotten a few massages in my life where i don't know nothing about it by the way so i'm just gonna have you explain it where you're moving your hands like in a certain direction one way and then i know you do trigger point which is trigger point release and then there's I like it's a different types of benefits to each way of how you're working the fascia or the muscle itself Absolutely. D depending on the way that you feel the practitioner working on your muscles. So this kind of stuff you were talking about with circles, that's really going to like increase fluids to the area. And that's going to be targeting the muscle. A trigger point is going to target the nervous system and like a knot that you might feel in your shoulder. And then fascial work or deep tissue work is a lot slower. And that's going to open up the connective tissue more. So depending on what you're coming in for, like if I have someone with low back pain, the first thing I do is I pull on their ankles and I see the difference between their left and their right leg to see where they're tighter. And then even though they're having back pain, it might be their hip or it might be their hamstring that needs to be released in order to balance out the center of the body. Um, I can't give you a general thing because it really varies from person to person. And of course. Them, but it, it's a really effective way to optimize bringing your your body into balance so everything that you do fitness wise and athletically is going to have better um you're going to have better exertion when your body from the the grounded point is 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 balanced love it and i want to jump into the one you just uh took your test on so you're super fresh about it <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about acupuncture and the benefits of acupuncture and why someone would need it. I'm sure your brain is like so much acupuncture in there right now. Break what it down I, a little bit. What I love about acupuncture from a Western medicine standpoint is massage and fitness and yoga. They all target the muscular skeletal system. What acupuncture does very effectively, it will target your muscles, but it's a really deep way to target the nervous system and your circulatory system. So a lot of different things that I can't treat just physically, like uh, say you have somebody who has pain because of maybe a neurological thing that can be targeted with acupuncture a lot better. I might have someone who's coming in with like pain in like a deep joint. And while I can massage the skin and the muscles, if it's deep into the joint, it's not going to go as far into that area. So being able to use a needle to get deeper into the body and really target the nervous system and the circulatory system really broadens the scope of practice. Beyond that, it's great for digestive issues, you know, female gynecological issues. I have people who come in with autoimmune disease and we can really target that from an Eastern perspective. Love it. I love the blend of Eastern and Western. I think it's really important that they kind of merge together as opposed to just being. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. 
All right, and then just kind of sum it up, throw it together with yoga. How does yoga kind of go in with these? What kind of uh, practices would someone be working with and break us down with the benefits of yoga? I think and yoga. What type of yoga? <laughs> We do emerge yoga. So I, I've studied with a lot of different teachers and in yoga, which, you know, people say it's not a religion, but a lot of it is, is embedded in like Hindu beliefs and stuff like that. Cause it originates in India and, and there's nothing wrong or bad about that. But what I've taken from yoga myself, that's the most fundamental thing is learning how to get into a mindfulness practice. And this is Western medicine. Stress is correlated to 99.9% .9 of all disease. If you think about disease in the body, it's because our nervous system is having what's known as a sympathetic response. That's our fight and flight nervous system. And what yoga does when we think about just stretching while breathing or getting into a meditation or a mindfulness practice is it gets us out of that sympathetic nervous system into our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest, repair, and digest. And if you think about it, even with COVID-19 that's going on, we have people who are stressed and we have people who are sitting home and they're sedentary and getting into the parasympathetic nervous system, that rest and digest place, it's going to increase our metabolism and it's going to help us be able to combat de different viruses, different pathologies and allow our body to function better. So for me, yoga is the thread that goes through everything because it doesn't matter what you do. If this isn't in a clear space, the, the work that you're getting is going to be temporary. Yeah, so true. I'm a big believer in practicing like mindfulness, breathing. I think it really helps you clear and gain that focus. And something I've learned, and I just, it comes in practice, learning how to get into your headspace and learning how to meditate. Because in the beginning, and maybe you can give us some tips of how to kind of cope with this, your mind's running a mile a minute, and it's so hard to figure out how to meditate because you don't really know what you're doing and you're just lying there with your eyes closed. So you got any tips and tricks for us? Well, I think the biggest misconception about meditation is that you're supposed to clear your mind. Because when you think you have to clear your mind, what you do is you spend the entire external quiet time thinking about, oh, I'm thinking. Oh, I'm still thinking. My mind is not quiet. And I'm thinking about how I'm not quiet and I'm thinking about thinking. And, and that's the, the hamster wheel that a lot of people get on. It's not about quieting your mind as much as it's twofold. Either focus on one thing because your mind actually can't focus on more than one thing at a time. So if you focus on your breath, you're focusing on your breath and then the mind gets quiet until you think about something else and you come back. So it's that, that refocusing or you just watch your thoughts. And there's a difference between watching something as an observer and then participating in your thoughts where it's like, now I'm getting into a conversation with myself. But if you start to recognize I'm thinking about how I'm thinking and I should be quiet, then after that, you're like, okay, and there might be some space. But this is a long practice. And, and I actually of offer a free meditation class every uh, Sunday morning, and you could come to my studio or it's over Zoom. So oh, I get awesome. tips and tricks for people who are new at this. We'll put that uh, Zoom link or any kind of connection on our show notes so people can hook up with you if they want to go over about that. Love that. And just to kind of start wrapping this up and really summing it up, I just want to pick specific issues and kind of talk about how you would treat with somebody and stick with ones that everybody has. First, I want to go with viruses and viral diseases. I'm not I'm talking beyond COVID. I'm talking flu and everything else out there. What are some ways through acupuncture, massage, and yoga that people can better themselves to better their immune system to have a better chance of surviving such a disease? So I would say, and, and this is not the mindset that a lot of people realize, but it's just how you set your body up in general. So for me, I'm one of those people. I don't use a lot of toxic chemicals at my house. I use essential oils to clean you know, my floor rather than something that's going to be um, a neurotoxin in my body in the first place. So just because my overall environment is a little bit more clear, it puts less of a demand on my immune system to protect me. So I think my immune system is a little bit stronger. Acupuncture is so good for boosting the immune system. So there's a lot of different techniques that you can do. I have people come in for regular treatments just to enhance their immune system. I also have an infrared sauna um, at my facility and sweating is one of the best way to actually literally uh, support the body from viruses and different bacteria. 
Um, and in general, when you do anything to relax, and that can be that foofy massage with some candlelight, and you get your mind into a place where it begins to calm down, and you transition into that parasympathetic nervous system, you are setting yourself up to be able to repair whatever is going off in your body and then be able to defend it against different viruses. That's why you see so many people, cold and flu season. Um, someone gets so sick, and someone else doesn't, and it has nothing to do. They could have been exposed to the same person. It's their internal environment that's either ready to fight off the disease or not. We have to stop looking at it as the exterior things that are invading us, and more so what's the constitution of what's happening inside of us, and then can our body take care of things the way it was designed to? Yeah, and giving your body the opportunity to be able to fight something like that. I think a great example is COVID, I'm just going to stick with that because everyone talks about it and everyone thinks they know everything about it. <laughs> but when you get sick with it, the probably one of the worst things you can do is lay in bed all day. And we put these this mindset in our, our heads that we have to quarantine for 10 to 14 days if we get COVID. And yeah, I understand not exposing yourself to other people. I'm not saying do that. But what I am saying is probably the best thing you can do for yourself is get up and move. When you lay down even from a Western medicine perspective, you're getting all the fluid build up in your lungs and that's gonna give you pneumonia. And pneumonia is gonna do a lot of damage to your lungs. And this is a virus that is already attacking your lungs. You need to move, you need to get up, you need to walk. And I, they're starting to introduce this philosophy a little more into hospitals. You're seeing a lot more patients that are being forced to get up, forced to move, because your body heals in motion. And I wanna, I wasn't gonna ask you this, but it's a conversation I was having with about seven different people over the last two weeks. It's some, it's a theory that I want to test and mm -hmm. I want to know your opinion on it because it's so interesting. So my theory is that our bodies are designed to heal in motion. And what I mean by that is if we go back all the way to our hunting gathering ages, if we got sick with any kind of whatever, whatever it is, cold, whatever, and we didn't move because we were sick and we slept, what would happen to us? We'd get eaten alive. We'd die of starvation. Or we wouldn't make it. So survival of the fittest would have dictated that those that were able to move and heal themselves in motion would have survived and passed on their genes. Therefore, we're doing ourselves a disservice by not getting up, not moving when we're sick, and just laying in bed all day. What do you think of that theory? I couldn't agree with you more. The past year, as someone who's been a, you know, a health, wellness, fitness professional for as long as I am, everything that we've done with quarantining to staying inside to now, you, you know who made a lot of money during all this? DoorDash. We don't even go out to eat anymore. So now we sit inside, we sit on our couch, we watch our Netflix, we eat, and we don't move. And that is like one of the worst things you can do for your health is to sit still and to be stagnant because in stagnation is when things begin to build up and become more toxic. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Love it. And then the last thing I want to talk about, just kind of a little basic thing, pull away from viruses, lower back pain. I'm going to pick specifically sciatica because everyone in the mother complains about sciatica. So what are some treatments you'd give someone if they are suffering from sciatica? So I'll say two things. A lot of people say they have sciatica and they don't have sciatica. They have piriformis syndrome, which is a fancy way of saying, my, my language, they have, a, they have a tight butt. There's a muscle called your piriformis that goes around your hip. When that's really tight, you um, will have it impinging on the sciatic nerve and that'll go down your leg. In yoga, if you were to Google pigeon or lay on your back, do a reclined ankle to knee stretch, that's one of the best ways to stretch the piriformis. Massage is gonna be really good for that as well. In terms of actual sciatica, that's gonna be coming more from the spine there's some tests to assess whether or not it's sciatica or piriformis syndrome. I'd say acupuncture would be even more effective in conjunction with massage and everything else if you have actual sciatica, because there's ways that you could use the needles and e stem and everything else to target the nerve itself more than just the muscle. So first is to see if you have sciatica or piriformis syndrome. Another part of that too is the hip flexors get really tight. So we always worry about stretching our back, but to do like a deep lunge or something like that will really help open up the front of the hip and that will affect the low back. Absolutely love it. And last question, last two questions. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I always say last question. And I always forget. I always have a last question for people mm -hmm. and then I, I, oh, every time. But anyway, so what's your, what's like a wrap it up, 
last bit of inspiration I want you to give out to all of our listeners, something to all those people that are maybe thinking about exercise, thinking about getting involved in acupuncture. Give them just that piece of inspirational advice for them to take as a take home message. The first thing that came to my mind, I have so many of clients that come and see me and they say that I have healed them or I've helped them tremendously. And what I want to say to everybody is you all individually have the best healer attached to you. And that is your own body. And so much of what we do in Western medicine, but even in Eastern medicine and other holistic practices is we look for someone or something outside of ourselves to fix us. And my word of advice is no one needs to be fixed. You just need to learn to do things. And it could be so small at home, taking five minutes every morning and just breathing by yourself to get centered. Or it could be going to a practitioner for massage or acupuncture, going outside and running on your own or hiring a personal trainer. But all of these things that you're doing, they're not about someone else fixing you. It's just about setting your body up for success so it can work the way that it was optimized and designed to work. And that's how you stay healthy. And that's how you live longer in health and allow your body to fight off whatever might be coming at it from external stresses to different viruses and diseases. It's setting you up to heal yourself. And, and that would be my big take home. All these things just allow you to, you know, work the best for yourself. It's the best way to do it. You're doing this all to help set that person up for the best chance of getting through this. And of course, the last question, where can people find you? How can they get a hold of you? Give us all the good details. So my business is Emerge Yoga and Wellness. We're located at 623 Broadway in Massapequa. If you want to call us, the number is 516-781-1078 or email us at info, I-N-F-O, at emergeyw.com. It's Emerge Yoga on both Facebook uh, and Instagram or maybe Emerge Yoga Wellness, one of those. You'll find us if you Google us. We'll find you. I love it. Thank you so much, Vanessa, for coming on the show. And thank you guys for joining us on this week's episode of Health and Fitness Redefined. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button and join us next week as we dive deeper into this ever-changing field. And remember, fitness is a journey, not a destination. Until next time.